So we live in a world today that is extremely wicked, evil, and one might think that Jesus is going to be coming at any second. And I believe this is mainly because Christians have neglected their responsibility for being the light of the world. And as a result, the church has lost its influence in America and all across the world. We have neglected to be what God called us to be. And the world has decided to ignore us because of that. Now, it wasn't like that in the early church. So I want to have you today get out your Bibles and turn to Ephesians 5. This is a letter written by Paul to the Ephesians. Who knew, Paul knew, that this church was the light in this city that was filled with darkness. So let me read to you. This is the New Living Testament. I'm going to be reading from verse 8 to 14. And this is what Paul has to say about this particular church. He said, Once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Amen. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Now what worked in the first century church still works today. That passage of scripture, it enlightens us of three Remarkable things that occur when the light of God enters this dark world that we live in. You know, beginning at verse 8, it says, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord, so live as people of light. Coming to Christ is like stepping out of a room full of darkness and then stepping into a room that's ablaze with light. You see things you never saw before. You see things you didn't even know were there. Right. And when you lived in the darkness, you did things that you wanted to do because you were living in the flesh. But now that you are in the light, you refrain from participating in the deeds of darkness and you live a lifestyle more fitting for the children of the light. And we are children of the light. Verse 9 spells this out for us. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Goodness. Goodness touches how we deal with other people. Righteousness involves our commitment to obey God's laws, God's commandments, to do his will. And the truth demands that we live a life of integrity. Where is that today? Which leads us to a new goal, which is pointed out in verse 10. To find out what, pre, what praises and pleases the Lord. Find out what pleases the Lord. We can no longer say, well, if it feels good, let's do it. We can no longer say, 
I don't care what anybody else thinks. I'm going to do it anyway. We no longer say, well, everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is believing it. Everybody else is saying it. Why don't I? We can't do that when we are children of the light. We've got to live in that light. We must do what pleases the Lord. Now we believe there is a God in heaven who has spoken his will to us through his word. And we believe that his word is authoritative and that he has the absolute right to determine what our choices should be which includes what we say, what we should eat, what we should drink, what we should do, who we should have sex with, how we conduct our business affairs, and any other choices that we make in our lifetime. And the world that we live in, they cannot they are unable to really understand this. They cannot understand how we as Christians are so committed to doing what pleases our Lord. For example, we believe that there is a God in heaven whose words about sexuality should all be obeyed. And for this reason, we believe there are only two sexes. We believe that fornication outside of marriage is wrong. We believe that homosexual behavior is a sin. And because of that, we cannot get behind and support gay marriage. Even though the rest of the world rejects what we believe and rejects what the Bible teaches, us to do. We have to do what pleases the Lord. It also means that we believe that abortion is murder. Yes. We love our children and we believe that they should be brought up to respect and to honor their mothers and their fathers. They should also be raised in loving and caring homes. And they should be trained and educated in the ways of the Lord. Is that not what we believe? Mm, yes. As Christians, we value this and we strive to live a life of integrity. To be truthful in all of our ways. And therefore, we are offended by lies and fraud and corruption in any part of our lives wherever it may be taking place. You know, the government may pass whatever laws it wishes, but no act of Congress and no edict of the Supreme Court can ever overturn and overrule what God has decreed. Amen. It can't happen, not in our lives. And as we read Paul's words to the, to the Ephesians in verses 11 and 12, he says, Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Yes. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. When Paul speaks of the things done in secret, he's referring to those vile acts of evil that go way beyond just ordinary acts of rebellion and sinfulness. He's talking about acts of evil that are abominable in God's sight because they are so wicked, they are so unnatural. And they are so perverted that they should make you as a Christian sick to even think that they occur. Yes. Now 
certainly this applies to various acts of sexual immorality, pedophilia, sex trafficking, child sacrifices. And Paul assures us that the light of the gospel exposes evil for what it really is. Things done in the shadows or done in the dark, you know, they can be hidden. And you may not see the evil in them until the light reveals everything. When the gospel and the good news invades a community or a state or a nation, corruption will come to light. And the wickedness will be exposed. As we continue to read Paul's words to the Ephesians, we must take Paul's warning here very seriously because he is warning us that it can be dangerous to expose the filthy things of darkness because sometimes we unconsciously begin to promote them ourselves and worse yet, we get drawn into them ourselves. Paul addressed this when he wrote a letter to the Galatians in Galatians 6. He says, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you may be tempted also. And our zeal to help the hurting we sometimes ignore this warning because Satan is tricky. He knows that if he can get one person to be tempted, if he can get one person to fall into this trap of sin, he can probably get another and then another and then another. Well, the same principle applies to why doctors wash their hands all the time, why they wash their hands so often. Because not only are they are trying to avoid giving germs to their patients, but they're being cautious to guard against picking up germs from their patients to themselves. Yes. And in our attempts to help others, we must be careful. Least we might start making excuses for such behaviors offering rationalizations and avoiding confrontation and letting sympathy replace the truth. Now, I know I have been caught up in this in the past, having to make some really hard pastoral decisions regarding members of this church who were caught committing sins within this church. I trusted these persons, and it was hard to believe that they would do some of the wicked things that they did within their roles of responsibility within this church. Now, this is in the past. And I was quick to make excuses for their behaviors, and I was slow in administering the biblical punishment which is demanded as consequences for such behaviors, especially within his church. <clears throat> but verse 13 describes the result of the need and the ministry of reproof for doing so. It says, but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. Sexual sins often seem pleasurable precisely because they are done in secret. Or so we think they are done in secret. But you get those emails exposed and those text messages exposed. And when those behaviors become public, people know about them, 
Well, suddenly the romance of such sins fades as the light enters the room. And as long as you live a double life with one foot in the light and one foot in the darkness, you're going to be forever torn in your behaviors and in your actions. You're living double-minded. You're living unhealthy because your heart is divided. It's going in two directions. And as Christians, it should not be a surprise when some people resent us for sharing and shining the light of God's truth. They resent us for doing that. And their usual response is, well, who are you to judge me? Well, I'm a nobody. And I can't judge anyone. Only God can judge. But God calls us to be the shining light, to, sh to let his light shine and, and present the truth and expose the wickedness, and then let the Holy Spirit judge the human heart. And that's why people don't like strong preaching of the truth, because the Holy Spirit will convict them when they hear the truth. And that's why we get such strong reactions from the gay rights supporters when we share a word with them about God's truth. And that's why they label us as reactionary fundamentalists and bigots and hate mongers and racists and fill in the blank, blank phobics right. and terrorists and everything else that they could come up to try to hurt us little us because the truth hurts and it will hurt you before it heals you and this is true whether you believe the word of God or you don't Go, that sword cuts both ways the same light that exposes the evils of society will also expose our own hypocrisy. It'll expose our secrets and our pride. It'll expose our sinful ambitions, our sexual compromises, our love for money, our need for power, our lust for approval. It'll expose the hidden idols of our heart. Because darkness can only produce darkness, but the light, the light can turn the darkness into the light. When God shines his light on someone's life, the darkness is gone forever. Hallelujah. And our lives are forever changed. I don't know if you ever remember singing this song. We're going to sing it in a little bit. I wandered so aimless, my life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Now, Paul didn't sing this, but this is what he is telling us when we get to verse 14. He says, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Rise from the dead. When the light of the gospel comes in, it wakes up the spiritually dead. There's a lot of spiritually dead people in the churches today. And for those that don't know Christ, it will draw them to the light. It will draw them to Jesus. That's the life-transforming power of the gospel. When Jesus comes into your life, he brings you Light chases away the darkness. 
this passage shows us what happens when the light of God enters your life. First of all, the light shines on us and it transforms us from darkness to light. And in the process, the same light purifies us and it heals us. And what do we want to do? We want to seek to please the Lord because we are now in the light. Second, the light shining through us chases away the darkness. It exposes the evil, which is normally done in the darkness under the cover of night. Because men, they love darkness. And they often fight against the light coming into their lives. But when the light does come into someone's life, it contains within itself a healing power. Because the light comes from God. It can take the darkness and it can turn it into light. And third, the light awakens those who are asleep. raises them from the dead. Paul knew that when the gospel shines on a society, the light will expose the wicked acts of people, and it's going to make them angry. But at the same time, the light will awaken others and draw them closer to Jesus Christ. It's a choice. Now, earlier I spoke of the moral decay that's going on all around us right now. But let no one despair, because the darker the night, the brighter the light will shine. Amen. It's precisely when the world is at its worst that the people of, of God should be at their brightest. We were made times like this and let no one be deceived that being the light is not easy the world doesn't want the light even though it desperately needs the light so I believe with all of my heart that the Lord is leading us into a season of light his light is shining into the darkness of this world. He is exposing the wickedness that has been spreading and covering this world. He is exposing the wickedness of abortion and the wickedness of Planned Parenthood. He is exposing the wickedness of sex trafficking and human trafficking, including the rape and the torture and the human sacrifices of children as young as one year of age. And God is exposing the wickedness of Epstein's Island and shining the light on all the hidden and the underground dens of evil, yes. torture, and death all throughout the world. Yes. They're everywhere. He is exposing the lies and the wickedness in our schools, in our universities, the brainwashing, the propaganda. The molding of minds and thought, beginning with our preschool children. The lies of CRT, the persecution of Christian beliefs, rights, freedoms, and liberties. He's exposing what is taking place. He's exposing the lies and the confusion in our elementary schools regarding gender identity. The wickedness behind introducing children as young as five to sexual practices and instilling a willingness to participate as both a victim or an instigator. God's light is exposing how all of this is designed to mold and to corrupt young minds to accept the vile purpose and reasoning behind this brainwashing. God is exposing the wickedness of the viruses released across the world. 
He's exposing the bio labs. He's exposing the research behind it. He's exposing the collusion, the purpose behind it, where it all originated, yes. and who is behind it and why. Yes. God is exposing the wickedness within the pharmaceutical companies, yes. unveiling the truth in what is in those shots, yes. and the long-term possible effects from them. It won't happen to everyone, but it will happen. It's not going to affect us, children of God. And he's exposing the wickedness and the lies and the collusion and the deceit amongst what I call the media knights, <laughs> the media publishers, the media news broadcaster. These are what I call the media knights. He's shining his light of the darkness, the secrets behind their collusion. His light will show that we have been primed and we have been brainwashed to believe the lies. He's exposing the wickedness behind the shut doors, the lockdowns, the mandates, the deaths, the exposures, the censorship, the lies, the fraud, the corruption, and the deceit that is worldwide. Every nation. He's shining his light on, and he's exposing the evil behind the gas shortages and the food shortages, and now the baby formula shortages. What kind of evil person would create baby formula shortages without an intent to have more babies die? He is exposing the wickedness behind the stolen elections, not just in America, but I'm talking about elections all across the globe. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And which have been taking place for years. Yes. He's exposing the who, the how, the why, the when, the where. He's exposing the wickedness and the fraud and the corruption behind Russia Gate, behind the 2016 election. 2018 election, the 2020 election, and the upcoming 2022 elections. He's exposing the evilness and the corruption that's going on behind the scenes. He's exposing the wickedness behind the Ukraine-Russian war, the who and the why and when it really began, yes. and what the evil leaders are hoping to achieve from this war, and what are they hiding He's exposing the works of the devil and forming a one world order, yes. ushering in the Antichrist. But God says it's not time yet. The light of heaven is flooding this world right now, and he is awakening the dead spiritually to the evil that's going on and is so rampant and so hidden in the darkness. And God is about to bring judgment. He's going to bring judgment against the liars and the conspirators and the instigators and the pawns and the puppet masters behind all these things. He's going to bring judgment against those teachers and the school board members and the sexual predators and the elitists, and the drug pushers, and the solicitors, the torturers, the abusers, the Baal worshipers, yes. the evil of Hollywood, yes. the lying news media, the politicians, the mayors, the governors, the senators, the corrupt police. They're not all corrupt police, but he's going to expose the corrupt police, the corrupt physicians and nurses, and the evil members of the church. And expose the wicked and bring judgment against the wicked royalty family members, the judges, including Supreme Court justices, the pharmaceutical organizations, the insurance companies, the big tech corporations and their figureheads, the demonic shakers and woke companies yes. and organizations, and the wicked presidents and kings and presidents.
premiers and their administrative staffs behind this. And those wicked generals and the military elitist and every antichrist spirit and figurehead in the world. They are all going to be exposed for who they are. And God is going to remove them forever. And God's justice will fall on each and every one of them. And he is going to bring peace to this world again. God's light is penetrating the darkness. Every square inch of this planet his truth, his righteousness, and his plan will prevail. We are called to save the world because only God can do that. But we are called to make a difference. We can't do everything, but there's one thing That is to be the light. So I'm going to ask our worship team to come up right now. Let's be the light. I want to invite everybody else to stand up, and to get ready, and let the sun shine in. Face it with a grin. Open up your heart and let the sun shine in. Jesus is that son. So this is a time to dance and to celebrate for all that God is doing in this world. We're coming out of the darkness. We're coming into the light.